Some communities, whenever there is any mention of them, it's usually nothing positive. Back Bush is a community that sits at the foot of Warwicka Hills in East Kingston, just off Mountain View Avenue. The community is a marginalized squatter area that, like many other squatter settlements, have been tainted by violence over the years. But in 2019, one positive thing that could be said about Backbush is that it was the home of Terania Clark, the promising young football player. Waterhouse captain Terania Clark put the icing on the cake late in the game with a sensational free kick. I'm feeling good about the win, but not good, good after the performance because it would have been done very good in the first half and we didn't do that. In 2019, Terania Clark was on the edge of greatness. She was a rising star riding high on her many successes as a young female midfielder. But no one was prepared for what would eventually happen to this promising young woman. Terania Clark was born on October 3, 1999 to Warren and Charmaine Clark and grew up in the community of Backbush. She grew up with family around her, her parents, siblings and other extended relatives and was a cheerful child, always having a smile on her face. Other notable qualities of Terania, who was affectionately called Plum Plum, is that she was a leader and she loved football. She had remarkable skills on the field and this was obvious to anyone who knew anything about the sport. As a student at Excelsior High School, Terania was a shining star as she led the school to three Issa Schoolgirls football titles. She represented Jamaica at the 2014 CONCACAF Girls Under-15 Championship and went on to also represent the country in the 2016 CONCACAF Women's Under-17 Championship. By the age of 20 years old, Terania was the captain of the Waterhouse football team and had led them to four league titles. In September 2019, she made her debut on the national team and was months away from leaving Jamaica for Daytona State College in Florida on a scholarship. Up was the only way to go. On the evening of October 31, 2019, Terania left home to meet a friend in Halfway Tree, a busy shopping district. As it turned out, she met up with 20-year-old Rochelle Foster, who has claimed that the two were in a romantic relationship. At some point, the interaction between the two females turned deadly, and by the end of the evening, Terania would be in a morgue, and Rochelle would be in handcuffs. News of the passing of the talented young woman shocked the nation and soon we would learn that Rochelle Foster was charged with her murder. But what exactly transpired on the evening of October 31? Well, they say there are two sides to every story, but in this case, there are three. One we will never hear because dead men tell no tale. According to Rochelle Foster, who was 23 years old at the time of her trial, she and Terania had been involved in a toxic love affair. She said the relationship with Terania was an experimental one for her and that things quickly got sour between them because Terania, quote, wanted a more committed relationship. She told the court that before the night of the murder, she told Terania of her desire to end the relationship and Terania got upset, hitting her. Rochelle said she didn't want to get in a physical altercation with Terania, so she asked her to go home. 
the next time they would see each other was on the night of October 31, 2019. Rochelle told the court that they agreed to meet up that night because Terania had claimed that the phone that was gifted to her by Rochelle was not working properly. She said she agreed to meet up to collect the phone in order to get it checked for Terania. She said that the young footballer tried to reconcile, but she said no, and that angered Terania. She said it was at that point that Terania grabbed her and began to hurl expletives at her, all the while threatening her. She told the court that she reached for her knife that was in her bag, and Terania tried to take it from her, but she held on to it because she knew that if she had let it go, she would have been the one to have died that night. She said they struggled on the ground, but as she was attempting to get up, Terania lifted her blouse and showed her a wound that she said she got from the fight during the tussle. She claimed that she immediately dropped the knife and tried to get help for Terania. She said no one would help, so she left her at the scene and went to the halfway street police station to get help, but was also ignored there. Rochelle maintains that she stabbed Terania by accident in an attempt to defend herself. But an eyewitness who was also present in court had a different account of how it all went down. The eyewitness said that there was an argument between the two. Rochelle accused Terania of deliberately ignoring her calls. According to the witness, Terania said that her phone was acting up and that other people were having problems reaching her as well. According to the witness, Rochelle lunged forward and tried to grab the phone from Terania, who pushed her hand away. The witness went on saying that it was then that Rochelle took a knife and stabbed Terania. Terania gasped, You stabbed me. And Rochelle responded saying, May we do it again. And then she stabbed her again. Many have been known to use their talents to help their family members out of poverty. And at 20, Terania Clark was already contributing to her family financially. And who knows, she might have actually been able to give them a better life. But now, we will never know.